Let's talk about how to get to the heart of the matter. Set up for success, Sharon Horn Elstrom here. I'm gonna put my heart on, heart on my, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got my little heart on. So we can talk about the root cause. I, I like root cause because I'm a nerdy engineer with a quality background and I work in corporate America where we talked about and we looked into finding what was the real cause? What was at the root, the heart of the matter? What was really causing something that we were seeing in our environment? I'm sure you've experienced this before. When we go to a doctor, our doctor will listen to our symptoms. They'll, they'll, we'll share our symptoms. We'll share what's going on, what we're feeling and experiencing. And based on that and their experience, they will, they will attempt to come up with a diagnosis. Finding, you know, a diagnosis is the root cause, okay? If I go to the doctor and I've got um, problems with my joints and they run some tests and they say, okay, you've got rheumatoid arthritis, which is a you know, massive type of inflammation. Now they have prescribed and they've, well, they've diagnosed and now they can prescribe some kind of a medicine and treatment to help, but they're not really, they're not really curing my arthritis <clears throat> because there really isn't a cure for rheumatoid arthritis, right? They're just gonna prescribe medications and drugs that mask the symptoms of the inflammation caused by the arthritis. But if they can get to a root cause, if they can find out what's really going on and diagnose it, they can better prescribe things that will help with and mask those symptoms. The same is true whenever we're solving any kind of a problem or challenge in our lives. A lot of times, we'll just be putting Band-Aids on stuff, right? You fall down, you cut your knee, you put a Band-Aid on it to stop the bleeding or to prevent the bleeding from dripping down your leg. But if you really need to learn how to ride your bike better, the root cause of the problem is you don't have the skills to ride your bike with proficiency enough to not fall off it every day and re-skin your knees, you're just gonna have to keep applying band-aids and that's not gonna really solve the problem until you back it up and go to what really needs to happen in order to prevent the problem or the situation from happening in the first place. So I've, I've spent decades doing root cause analysis and looking into things and digging back and, and figuring out, well, yep, here's all the things we're seeing on the surface, but what's really causing those things to happen? There's so many problems we have as a, as a global society that if we would actually just go back and find the real root cause versus adding political spins and nonsense to it and blaming other things that have nothing to do with what's happening and the results we're seeing, we would be so much better off. But that is definitely a topic for another day. So setting up for success, how do you, what's the best way for you and me to get to the root cause, the heart of the matter, the heart of the beating heart of what's really going on if our relationships a lot of time it is what's the emotion what's the feeling what's going on is it that the particular situation or the way somebody said something to us triggers us from a past relationship that we were in that was at the beginning of the end of our last relationship so and so said this and this happened and then all of a sudden your your relationship tanked and now your current partner said something similar totally different, totally out of context, but it triggered that same series of events and feelings in you. And so now you're afraid that this relationship too is doomed for failure. You know, we as humans can build up all kinds of craziness in our minds and hearts and lives and drama that just doesn't need to happen. If we take a deep breath, really look at what's going on. And my favorite way to deal with a situation to try to find out what the root cause is, what's really happened, what's really caused the result that I'm looking at, is to work backwards or to analyze step-by-step step the process of how it could possibly have happened. I'll give you an example. I'm gonna take off my heart because it's falling off. I'm gonna take off my heart. Uh, when I was working in corporate America, I was in the quality function. For most of my jobs, after about my first job, I moved into quality and I loved quality. I loved the function, mainly because I could stick my nose in everybody's business and I got to see how everything worked throughout every aspect of the organization. Quality isn't just the absolute aspects and attributes of the end product, at least not in my definition. It's the quality and the way and the how we do absolutely everything in the organization, which is really wide open and fun for me. So we, I, that meant part of my job was to handle customer complaints and quality complaints. And we would have some of the most unbelievable, far-fetched, outrageous complaints come into the business and come into the quality department where we handled those complaints. And some of them sounded so unrealistic, so outrageous, so ridiculous that other people would laugh at them. And I would say, and I would ask myself, 
okay, yeah, this sounds far-fetched and unbelievable. You know, people would say that, for example, I was working at a big industrial bakery. People would claim that they had bones and skeletons in their bread. Well, we sold a garlic bread that um, sometimes in the garlic, very rarely, but sometimes in the garlic, part of the husk or part of the hull would get from the garlic, you know, the garlic clove would get crunched up and there'd be little traces of that in there. And people thought that those were animal bones. One th person thought it was rat bones or mice bones or something. And so we had them send the sample to us. We had it tested. And of course, it was a part piece of garlic clove. But we wouldn't have known that if we would just have thought, okay, those people are crazy. They're just making stuff up. It's not possible. It could never happen. Now, could a mouse theoretically get into a product ever? Absolutely. If you look at, this might freak some people out, but if you look at food standards, it's perfectly tolerable. There's actually a tolerance for how much animal feces, how much bug portions, and how much animal parts you can have per whatever. And there's numbers and statistics, and I could look those up, but it's not important for the conversation. But there's some of that in probably most of the food that we consume, or some of the food that we consume, right? It just happens. When you um, cultivate a field of wheat to make flour, guess what? Sometimes the equipment picks up a little bit of animals and they get chopped up and processed in the process and that means there could be a microscopic amount of that particular thing in your food source. Don't freak out people, it's not gonna kill you. Uh, but we wouldn't know anything about that or possible if we didn't work backwards and say, well, how might this be possible? How could this happen? And here's an example. We had a lady complain about fly larva in her daughter's graduation cape. So they cut into the cape at the graduation party and there were little fly larva and little flies coming out of the cape. Now, as far-fetched and crazy as that sounds, instead of thinking that she was crazy, I said, okay, let me backtrack in the process. Let me really analyze and look at our entire process of how we make graduation cakes and see if anywhere in our process Something could have happened out of the ordinary even, out of our ordinary operating procedures that could have resulted in this. And lo and behold, working backwards, because one of the fastest ways to analyze your process and really see if there's a hole in it or a gap is to work backwards. Backwards from the, the symptom or the result that you're seeing to the front of the process where you first start beginning to create the product or service that you're making. So I did that. I worked backwards in our process and, you know, I looked at the process flow forward first and then I thought, okay, yeah, I see how we do this. I don't really, I don't necessarily see how a fly could have gotten anywhere near these cakes. But then, lo and behold, by working backwards, I found out and realized that when the cakes are baked, after they're baked, they're put in cabinets to cool. These big, giant bakery cabinets, they're on pans and they're put in these cabinets to cool. And then after they cool, the door is shut and they're rolled into a big walk-in freezer. Well, guess what? Next to the bakery cake department was on the other side of it, the loading dock. And there was a gap in the separation between the two departments where, guess what? Flies come in on the loading dock. When you open the truck bays to let the trucks back in, flies could get in the loading dock. And yeah, we had bug zappers and all the things that you need to have to prevent flies and fruit flies and anything like that from getting in. But does that mean that a fly couldn't get in? No, absolutely positively could get in. So the fact that we were keeping those cabinets open in proximity to the other department where there was a gap in the wall between the two departments, a fly could totally get in. Flies find a way, especially when sweets are involved. So lo and behold, by backtracking that process, we found out that the root cause was a breakdown in the process of the way they were handling the cakes, not that we were trying to do anything wrong, right? Usually, whenever we see a symptom of something, it isn't initially because people are evil and trying to do something wrong. It's because there's a break in the process, the way we do things, it's almost never a human error. It's a, an error in the way the system was set up to handle processes and procedures that causes a challenge or a problem. And we, we had we not done that, guess what? Somebody else could have gotten fly larva in their cake. That would be terrible, right? It was horrible for the person that got it. It was horrible for us as a, a company because we're like, oh my God, how could this possibly happen? But, you know, backtracking, it was absolutely, it wasn't probable, 
but it was indeed possible. And whenever anything's possible, we want to close down and fix the process where that can be possible. Well, how do we do that to set ourselves up for success? Well, we make sure that when we're seeing a result in our life that we don't like, we backtrack and we figure out, we don't just mask the symptom and try to throw you know, sugar or money or whatever at it. We try to figure out what, what's the real reason, what's going on, especially in relationships. When our relationships are struggling and we're not getting the results we want, throwing money or gifts or energy at it or things at it, material things, probably isn't going to solve the problem. We need to get to the root cause of why is somebody feeling negative or alone or frustrated or however they're feeling. We need to find out what's the root cause of that and is that something that I can do and I can fix and I can control or is that something that's inherent in the person that I'm interacting with and there's nothing I can do. They have to decide themselves that, that they're you know what's right for them what feels right for them and if the, even if the relationship is right for them so I love this one getting to the heart of the matter getting to the root cause of the matter it's not as hard as we think it's a matter of really digging in and asking questions not taking things on face value have you ever been to the doctor you tell them how you're feeling about something and they immediately prescribe something and you you haven't even been there two minutes or five minutes and they automatically assume they know what's going on with you and they prescribe something and they, and they try to boot you out the door and you're like, okay, this is what's going on, but that is not what I came here for. I didn't come here for a prescription. I came here so you can help me with your expertise figure out what's going on so I can find the best way to solve it for myself. And the best way for me personally isn't a, a drug or a prescription. The best way is to, the knowledge and the wisdom to know what is, what are, what are the possibilities? What are different ways of handling this? So I love this, getting to the heart of matter, getting to the root cause. It's, it's definitely my thing, one of my, uh, I don't know if it's a superpower, but it's something I absolutely positively love to do. It's kind of like finding things. I love finding lost things. So curious to know what your experience is with root cause analysis, getting to the heart of matter. There are all kinds of really fancy root cause analysis ways you can analyze situations and dig into situations that are hard and complicated. but. Setting yourself up for success is finding the simplest possible way to get the result that you want, at least in my opinion, because it takes out all the complication and the stress and the drama and the trauma that goes along with things. So that means just work backwards. One of the ways besides working backwards is to be a product or service that the people you work with or interact with would experience. So for example, if it's a relationship challenge that you're having or a relationship thing, Put yourself in the other person's shoes. We all have the ability to be empathetic and put ourselves in the other person's shoes and try to see situations where there's conflict um, from the other person's perspective. And it's amazing how our eyes will be open to other possibilities and other solutions when we are willing to see things from a different perspective, look at things from a, a, a different way and try to find out what's really going on. A lot of times we'll find out what's really going on has nothing to do with the current situation and has nothing to do with us. And if that's the case, that's a different root cause and different things that have to be put in place to deal with that than if it truly is us. And guess what? Sometimes it is us. Sometimes we're just having a hard time and, and in a bad place and being a jerk to somebody and we don't even realize it because that's all about us, right? And that would be the root cause. And guess what? The best root causes are the ones that we have control over and that we can change. So even though sometimes they feel like they're the most difficult and most challenging, uh, when we're having mindset or belief issues or challenges with things and we find ourselves in a situation where that's holding us back, the good news is we are 100% capable of dealing with that. Nobody else can do it for us. All right, that's our, our setup for success today. Get to the heart of the matter. Really find out what's going on. Don't assume. And once you know what that is, solve the real problem, not the surface symptoms. Have an amazing day. Any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow with another setup for success as we work our way toward the next 30-day free Get Up and Go Challenge, where you're guaranteed to be better off after you face a change or a challenge than before if you go through the process, if you go through the challenge, if you learn and automatically install this framework into your being your subconscious so it automatically works in you to guarantee that you're going to get better results than before you had the change of change. All right, have a great day. I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.